And also, connection with an inner source is time. Because we may have, be thinking about how we're going to solve a problem for hours because we're not connected with our source. And the moment we connect with that source by doing some kind of technique, we immediately get an inner guidance and we save much time. So there, time is energy, time is clarity, time is connection with a source within us. So don't be fooled by the idea that you don't have time to employ at certain periods throughout the day these techniques. It is the employment of these techniques, which we'll be learning on the weekend, is twofold. It's a daily practice, which we perform every morning or every evening or both, or whenever you can. It's a daily process, independent of whatever happens in our lives. And then there is the coping with the specific situations which come up. So we have our daily practice which creates a basic level of harmony, health, and energy. And then when throughout the day there are periods which we feel lesser energy or negativity, anxiety, or tiredness, we employ a few techniques to regain our harmony. Let's continue with this, uh, observa with this questionnaire. During which periods of the day do you have the greatest clarity of mind? During which periods of the day do you have the least clarity of mind? Then it asks about the greatest inner peace, periods of the day, the least inner peace. And then question seven, observe and record the effect of how the various activities listed below uh, upon your energy level and the feelings of vitality is your energy increased or decreased after these activities? If the short and long run results are different, indicate so. Evening sleep. You feel better or worse after evening sleep? Afternoon rest or sleep. After deep relaxation. Eating a snack. Eating a light meal. Eating a large meal. Smoking a cigarette. Drinking alcohol, drinking water, drinking a hot beverage, taking a shower, washing the face, arms, and hands, superficial conversation, stimulating conversation, affectionate contact with another person, sex with orgasm, sex without orgasm, yoga exercises, uh, gymnastic exercises, swimming, walk in nature, walk in the city, breathing techniques, meditation, prayer, expressing your emotions, expressing love. Now there could be a lot of other things which someone would add to this list and which you may want to observe and see what effect they have on your energy level. There's, we are seeing the body as a machine now this week, as a live machine, but a machine, and we want to see what affects that machine, because energy is a very important aspect of our lives. Question eight, are you satisfied with your energy level in your daily life? And nine, if you're not satisfied and would like more energy, consider how you can increase your energy level based on your answers to the above questions. Make a program for increasing and maintaining your vital energy. That program would consist of things which we have decided that we would like to do less or not at all, such as eating certain foods or at a certain times of the day. It may include things that we want to include in our lives, such as taking a rest in the afternoon or doing exercises daily or breathing techniques or relaxation or prayer or meditation, whatever, or dancing or drawing or singing or jogging or walking in nature. Whatever you find is helpful for your energy. And we're not interested only in having high energy, but high harmonious energy. We're also not interested in having anxiety and a lot of 
uh, emotional tension within ourselves. Now, we're going to speak about some basic things that, which will help. One basic help with our energy level is contact with water. It is known that water is a revitalizing element on the physical body. And uh, in yoga, many systems prescribe what is called the half bath. Half bath is the process of washing our hands, washing our face, in India because they walk barefooted, washing our feet. Uh, and this can happen before every meal, before we sleep, when we wake, before we pray or meditate. And this does have a vitalizing and harmonizing effect. This is also helpful when we have nervous tension, when we're upset, and also very helpful when we're tired and worn down. Water has a very soothing and harmonizing effect on the body. So anyone who's not satisfied with his energy flow, he may want to incorporate this into his life. Frequent half baths. And then, of course, a full shower daily. And if there's a period of time in which we feel our energy becoming negative, we may want to take a second shower <coughs> at that time of the day. It's always helpful to finish up, at least, with cold water, even if we start with hot, to finish up with cold water, with revitalize, which revitalizes the body even more. Uh, another important aspect in harmonizing our energy level is exercise. And we're going to talk about some basic categories of exercise in a short time. And then we're going to show them on this weekend seminar. Then breathing. Breathing in yoga is associated with what is called, with what is called pranayama, which is the uh, fourth step of the process of self-control, which is called Raja Yoga. And prana means energy, and yama means to control. Yama is the controller, the controller of life. He's the god of death. So pranayama is the control of bioenergy. It doesn't mean breathing exercises, but breathing exercises are a basic aspect of pranayama. They're a basic aspect of the control of bioenergy, because the prana or the bioenergy, is directly associated with the breath. It's not just the oxygen that we take in. It's the life force which we take in through the breath, but it's connected with the chakras, with the energy centers. So by learning to breathe slowly, by learning to breathe deeply, completely, and by learning to breathe harmoniously with specific ratios of breathing, uh, w w by ratios, we mean certain analogies between the inhalation, the holding of the breath, the retention, the exhalation, and the holding without breath. And these four acts, we can create a relationship between these four acts of breathing, and each different relationship, uh, timing, creates a different state in the body and mind. And we'll be discussing these ratios on the weekend and which ratios are for gaining more energy, which are for creating harmony, which are for emptying the mind, depending on our purpose and our goal. Of course, in the beginning, the most simple ratio is one to one. That is, learning to make the inhalation equal to the exhalation, or the exhalation double the inhalation, because we want to always ensure a complete exhalation before we inhale. We'll discuss that on the weekend. 